Hello everyone, welcome to Creative Civil Engineering Coach. This video is about KPIC recruitment for Civil Assistant Engineer in the Department of Siri Culture, which was held on 7th December 2014. So let's solve this question paper. Question number 1. Poison ratio is defined as the ratio of lateral strain to longitudinal strain. Option B is the right answer. Poison ratio is denoted by the symbol mu. It is the ratio of lateral strain to longitudinal strain. And the value of poison ratio ranges between 0 to 0 0.5. Maximum value of the poison ratio will be 0 0.5. Question number 2. Shear stress acts. Shear stress acts tangential to the surface. Option C is the right answer. Question number 3. The relationship between Young's modulus and rigidity modulus is. We know that from elastic constant relationship between Young's modulus, rigidity modulus and poison ratio is. E is equal to 2 times of rigidity modulus into 1 plus poison ratio and E is equal to 3 times of bulk modulus into 1 minus 2 times of poison ratio. These are the two standard formulas of elastic constant relationship. Let us consider equation 1 and equation 2. Equating for Young's modulus of elasticity 2g into 1 plus mu is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu 2g plus 2g mu is equal to 3k minus 6k mu so poison ratio mu is equal to 3k minus 2g divided by 6k plus 2g so this is also a standard formula which is most commonly asked in the competitive exams now substituting this mu value in any one of the above equation E is equal to 2g into 1 plus 3k minus 2 mu 2g divided by 6k plus 2g therefore E is equal to 18kg divided by 2 times of 3k plus g so it is equal to 2 1s are 2 9s are 9 kg divided by 3 k plus g. So this is a, another standard formula which is most commonly asked. So for the given question, the relationship between Young's modulus and rigidity modulus is E is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu. Option B is the right answer. Question number 4. The relationship between Young's modulus, rigidity modulus, bulk modulus is. As I solved earlier, this is a standard case of elastic constant relationship. That is, Young's modulus is equal to 9kg divided by 3k plus g. Option B is the right answer. Question number 5. Modulus of rigidity is defined as the ratio of. Modulus of rigidity is also known as modulus of transverse elasticity, which is denoted by the symbol or letter G. So as we all know that maximum shear stress is directly proportional to shear strain. So maximum shear stress is equal to G into shear strain. G is the elastic constant to remove the proportionality. Therefore modulus of rigidity G is equal to ratio of shear stress divided by shear strain. So option A is the right answer shear stress to shear strain. Question number 6. Principal planes are planes of. Principal planes are planes of zero shear stress. Option D is the right answer. These are the planes on which the maximum and minimum normal stress are acting at an angle of 90 degree to each other. Question number 7. Principal stress are given as. Principal stress either maximum or minimum is given by the formula sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus or minus square root of sigma x minus sigma y square plus 4 tau xy square divided by 2. Option B is the right answer. Question number 8. The centroid of equilateral triangle of a side L lies at a following distance perpendicular from any side. So let's consider a equilateral triangle ABC ABC. So these are the perpendicular distance from AB it is towards C from AC it is towards B and from BC it is towards a. So each side is of length L and its centroid is root 3 times of 
L divided by 2. Option B is the right answer. Question number 9. Shear stress variation for I section is. So let's draw an I section with a similar or symmetrical top and bottom flange. So the maximum shear stress will be acting along neutral axis. So this is the neutral axis. And at the top and bottom fiber, the shear stress will be zero. So the correct shear stress variation for I section is option D. Question button. The bending stress is proportional to. We know that from the general bending equation of the structure, M by I is equal to sigma by Y is equal to E by R. So the maximum bending stress is equal to E by R into Y. So it is proportional to Young's modulus of elasticity. Option C is the right answer since maximum bending stress is directly proportional to Young's modulus of elasticity. Question number 11. The slope and deflection at mid span of the simply supported beam carrying concentrated load at mid span is. So let's consider a simply supported beam. AB of a span length L subjected to concentrated load W at its mid span. So here you can observe the slope of a simply supported beam subjected to concentrated load will be 0 at either of the support and its maximum deflection will be at the center of a simply supported beam with the intensity of W L cube by 48 EI. Slope will be 0 and deflection will be maximum. So option B is the right answer. Question number 12. Torsional rigidity is defined as. From the twisting equation we know that T by J is equal to tau by R is equal to G theta by L. So T L divided by theta is equal to J into G. So this defines the definition of torsional rigidity which is the product of polar moment of inertia j and modulus of rigidity g. So option b is the right answer. Question number 13. During the manufacture of cement, gypsum is added to. During the manufacture of cement, gypsum is added to control the rate of setting that is to adjust the setting time of the cement. Option c is the right answer. This gypsum is added at the final grinding stage and hence controls the rate of hardening of cement. Question number 14. Gap graded aggregate is. Gap graded aggregate is defined as the grading where one or more intermediate size fractions are absent which results in lower requirement of water content. So option A is the right answer. One or more intermediate fraction of aggregates are absent. Question number 15. Bleeding of concrete is. Bleeding of concrete is the result of excess of water being forced to the surface of concrete so that the cement paste will rise to the surface of concrete. So option C is the right answer. Question number 16. The design reinforcement in a simply supported singly reinforced RCC beam is placed on. So let's draw a simply supported singly reinforced RCC beam. Let us consider this as simply supported singly reinforced RCC beam. This is a neutral axis. So for this type of the beam, the tension will be on bottom side of the beam and top will be on compression side. So the design reinforcement shall be provided always at the bottom of the beam. So that at bottom of the beam, bottom fibers below the neutral axis are subjected to tensile stress. So design reinforcement shall be provided on tension side. Option A is the right answer. Question number 17. One way slab of effective span 3.6 meter and 150 mm thick subjected to a factored live load and dead load of 10 kN per meter square. The design bending moment and shear force are. For a one way slab, the design bending moment is given by the formula WL square by 8 where W is the intensity of factor dead load and live load. It is given as 10 kN per meter square. So 10 into L is the effective length of one way slab which is given as 3.6 meter. So it is 3.6 square divided by 8. So the design bending moment will be 16.2 kN meter. Now the shear force Vu is given by the formula WL by 2. So Vu is equal to 10 into 3.6 divided by 2. 
So shear force will be 18 kilo Newton. So the right answer is option A. Question number 18. The fixed support in a real beam is assumed to be dash in conjugate beam. So let's draw in a real beam. This is fixed support and this is free end. So its conjugate beam will be free end and fixed support. So this is free end for fixed support and fixed end for free support. So option D is the right answer free end. For a fixed support in a real beam, it will be free end in the conjugate beam. Question number 19. Minimum reinforcement in HYST bar in the slab is dash of total cross-sectional area. So as per IS 456-2000, the minimum reinforcement in HYST bars is 0.12%. Option D is the right answer. So suppose if it is used as a mild steel bars for reinforcement, the minimum reinforcement will be 0.15%. So in the given question, it is asked particularly for HYSD bar. So it is the reinforcement of 0.12% of total cross-sectional area. Question number 20. Minimum number of bars in the square, rectangular and circular columns are. For a square column, the minimum number of bars will be 4 at 4 corners. And in a rectangular column, the minimum number of bars will be either 4 or sometimes in case of 6. So let's consider 6 and for a circular column the minimum number of bars will be 6. So the right answer is option C 4 6 6. Question number 21 as per IS 456-2000 code clarifies the rectangular compression member as a short when the slenderness ratio this is a major axis L by B along X direction if it is less than 12 it is termed as short column and L by B along Y direction. If it is less than 12, it is termed as short column. So the right answer is option B. Question number 22. In a pin jointed frame, the force in the member BD is. So we have to find the force in the member BD. Considering a joint at B, this is a joint at B. So we have to find the force in the member BD. So the force in the member BD will be 4 tons only. Option A is the right answer because there is no any other load acting either in the member AB or B. So the force in the member B, so the force in the member BD will be 4 tons only because there is no any other load either in the member AB, AC or AD or DC. The only load is downward concentrated load 4 tons. So the member BD will be acting in the 4 tons compressive load. Option A is the right answer. Question number 23. Bending movement at 1 by 4th of the span from the left support on a 3 inch parabolic arch subject to a UDL of W per unit length throughout the span is. So if you consider a 3 inch parabolic arch, so if it is subjected to UDL load throughout the span of W per unit, since 3 inch parabolic arch is statically determinate structure. The bending movement and shear force will be 0. Option C is the right answer. Question number 24. The section modulus of a circular section about xx axis throughout center of gravity is. We know that section modulus is the ratio of moment of inertia divided by maximum distance from top or bottom of the cross section. So, moment of inertia for a circular section is pi d to the power of 4 divided by 64 and maximum distance from top or bottom of the section is d by 2. On solving this, the section modulus will be pi d cube by 32. So the right answer is option. Question number 25. According to IS 800-2007, the minimum and maximum pitch of a bolt hole in the tension member are. So minimum pitch will be 2.5 times of diameter of bolt and maximum pitch will be 16 times of thickness of a plate or 200 mm whichever is minimum so the right answer is option c question number 26 a 18 mm thick plate is joined by 16 mm plate by 200 mm long butt weld determine the strength of the joint if a double v butt weld is used if fe410 grade of steel is used 
So in the following figure you can observe the double V butt joint. The thickness of the larger plate is 18 mm and thickness of the thinner plate will be 16 mm. Effective length of the weld is given as 200 mm. Grade of steel is given as 410 Newton per mm square. So the design strength of the weld is Fu by root 3 into length of the weld into thickness of the thinner plate divided by partial safety factor. Assuming the value of partial safety factor for shop weld as 1.25, the design strength will be 605.5. 987 kilo newtons so option a is the right answer question number 27 the slenderness ratio of a column of a length 3 meter both end pin having a minimum radius of gyration of 51.8 mm is we know that slenderness ratio is the ratio of effective length of the column divided by least radius of gyration so for a column of a length 3 meter with both end pin the effective length of the column will be 1 times of total length of the column. So it is 1 into 3000 mm divided by least radius of gyration is given. On solving this, the slenderness ratio will be 57.91 mm. So the right answer is option D. Question number 28. Pre-stress concrete means it is a compressive stress induced in the concrete before loading. To counteract the tensile stress. So option A is the right answer. Compressive stress is induced in concrete before loading. Question number 29. The diameter of the nozzle D for maximum transmission of the power is given by. Power is transmitted through pipe by allowing the water flow through pipe and the efficiency of the power transmitted is given by the formula head available at the nozzle minus head for the transmission of the power divided by head available at the nozzle. So, head available at the nozzle will be 2H divided by 3 and, and the head required for the power transmission is H by 3. So, head available at nozzle is equal to dynamic head at outlet of the nozzle. Head available at nozzle is 2H by 3 which is equal to dynamic head of V square by 2G. H by 3 is head required for the efficiency of the transmitted power so 2 into hf is equal to v square by 2g therefore d is equal to d to the power of 5 divided by 8 fl to the power of 1 by 4 so the right answer is option c d is equal to d to the power of 5 divided by 8 fl to the power of 1 by 4 Question number 30. A tank of uniform cross section area A containing liquid up to height H1 has an orifice of cross sectional area A at its bottom. The time required to empty the tank completely will be. Let H is the height of the water at any instant in container and dH is the change in height. At so when the tank is empty, H2 is equal to 0. Therefore, 2A into square root of H1 divided by square root of 2g is equal to cda into t therefore the time required to empty the tank completely will be 2a into square root of h1 divided by cda so the correct answer is option a question number 31 the property of the stream function is phi is constant everywhere on any streamline this statement is true Option B, the flow around any path in the fluid is zero for continuous type of flow. This statement is also true. And the rate of change of stream function with the distance of arbitrary direction is proportional to the component of velocity normal to the direction. So this statement is also true regarding the stream function. So right answer is option D. All of the above statements are correct. Question number 32, Blake's theory of seepage assumes. Blake's theory is the seepage theory which assumes the equal weightage to horizontal and vertical creep. So option A is the right answer. 
This theory is used for the design of hydraulic structures on permeable strata. Question number 33. The field capacity of soil is 25%, its permanent building point is 15% and the specific dry unit weight is 1.5. If the depth of root zone of the crop is 80 cm, the storage capacity of the soil is. So we have to find the storage capacity of the soil. We know that storage capacity of the soil is given by the formula dry unit weight into field capacity minus permanent wilting point divided by unit weight of water. So dry unit weight is given as 1.5 gram per cc. Field capacity is 25%, so 0.25. Permanent wilting point is 15%, so 0.15. Divided by unit weight of water means it is 1 gram per cc. So the storage capacity of a soil is 12 cm. So the right answer is option C. Question number 34. A river is said to be off. Here these statements are regarding the slope provided on the riverbed. So when there is certain slope which builds up, it is called a grading type of riverbed. So option A is a true statement. And when there is a cut in the bed to a certain slope, such type of riverbed is called degrading type. This statement is also true. And when there is a flow in a sinus curve, such type of the riverbed is called meandering type. So all these statements are true. So the correct answer will be option D. All of the above. Question number 35. Pick up the correct statement from the following. Option A. When rainfall rate exceeds the infiltration capacity, the water enters the soil at full capacity rate. This statement is true. Statement B. When rainfall rate is less than the infiltration capacity, the infiltration rate is approximately equal to the rainfall rate. This statement is also true. Option C. The actual infiltration rate at any time may be equal to or less than the infiltration capacity. This statement is also true. So among this, all the statements are correct. So the right answer is option D. All of the above. Question number, 30, question number 36. The rate of rainfall for a successive 10 minute period of a 60 minute duration storm are shown in the below figure. If the value of the phi index is 3 cm per hour, then the runoff will be. We know that runoff is calculated by the summation of rainfall depth minus phi index depth divided by total duration of storm. So runoff will be equal to so runoff will be calculated only when the rainfall depth is greater than phi index. So for the first time interval between 10 to 20 minutes it is 6 cm minus 3 cm of phi index plus second time interval 20 to 30 minutes it is 10 cm minus 3 cm plus for the third time interval between 30 to 40 minutes it is 8 cm minus 3 cm plus for the fourth time interval between 50 to 60 which is equal to 7 cm minus 3 cm into rate of rainfall for successive 10 minutes period means so 10 divided by 60 so the total runoff will be 3.166 cm which is nearly equal to 3 cm. So the right answer is option B. Question number 37. According to theme, the permeability of an aquifer may be obtained from the equation. So as per theme's equation, these are the formulas to calculate the permeability of an aquifer. So all these equations are correct. So the right answer is option D where R1 and R2 are the radial distance and H1 and H2 are the head at the drawdown. Question number 38. The area enclosed by the adjacent isoite of a catchment basin are shown below. These are the isoites and these are the corresponding area in square kilometer. The average depth of the annual precipitation in the catchment basin will be. So average depth of annual precipitation is calculated by the formula summation of average depth of isoite multiplied by its corresponding area divided by summation of area of isoid. So average depth of first isoid is 45 cm, for the second isoid it is 55 cm, for third isoid it is 65 cm, fourth it is 75 cm and for fifth it is 85 cm. So, so the total annual precipitation will be 6,35,000 divided by 10,000 which is equal to 
5 cm. So the right answer is option D. Question number 39. The given figure shows gradually varied flow in open channel with a beak in a bed slope. Types of the water surface profile occurring from left to right are. Here they have given the critical and normal depth line. So the flow is happening from left to right. Here you can observe the flow direction is given. It is occurring from left to right. And the bed at the beginning is horizontal and later there is a change in gradient. So here you can observe there is a change in grade. So here you can observe for the horizontal portion, the critical depth line lies above the normal depth line, which means that slope is steep. Therefore, critical depth is greater than normal depth. This horizontal portion, there may be two possibilities. One is H1 and H2. So for the steep portion, the only possible profile is S2. To have a falling profile, here you can observe there is a change in slope. So among the given options, the best answer is option B. H2 and S2 is the type of the profile in this section. Question number 40. Which of the following assumptions are made in analysis of jet impinging normally on a moving plate? When the jet impinges normally on a moving plate, the friction between the jet and plate is neglected. This statement is true. Statement 2. The flow is steady. This statement is also true. Statement 3. Movement of the jet is unchanged. Usually when the jet impinges normally on a moving plate, the direction of the velocity changes, hence the direction of movement also gets changed. So this statement is false because movement of the jet gets always change. Statement 4. Plate moves at a constant velocity. This statement is also true statement because plate moves at a constant velocity. So among these statements, the correct statement are 1, 2 and 4. So the right answer is option A, 1, 2 and 4. Question number 41. In a three layer soil, water flows parallel to the stratification. The thickness of the middle layer is twice that of top and bottom layer. The coefficient of permeability of middle layer is 2k is twice that of top and bottom layer k. What is the average coefficient of permeability for this flow? So let's draw. So let us consider this as a three layer soil where you can observe the thickness of the middle layer is twice that of top and bottom layer. So it is two times of h and the coefficient of permeability of the middle layer is twice that of top and bottom layer permeability. So it is also two times of k. So we have to find the average coefficient of permeability for parallel stratification. So it is given by k1 into h1 plus k2 into h2 plus k3 into h3 divided by h1 plus h2 plus h3. Six K H divided by four H H H will be cancelled. Therefore, the average coefficient of permeability will be one point five times of K. So the right answer is option C. Question number forty two. In the setup shown in the below figure, assuming the specific weight of the water as ten thousand Newton per meter cube, the pressure difference between A and B will be. So we have to find the pressure difference at point A and B. Here the fluid is a type of oil with a specific gravity of 0.98 and water specific gravity is given as 1. So the difference in the pressure between point A and point B is equal to difference of specific gravity 0.98 minus 1 into unit weight of water 10,000 Newton per meter cube into this is the vertical distance between the two different type of fluids which is oil and water so it is 50 centimeter so let's consider in terms of meter so 0 0.05 therefore difference between pressure at point a and point b will be minus 10 newton per meter square so the right answer is option b question number 43 a model of an open channel is built to a scale of 1 in 100. If the model has a Manning's coefficient of 0.013, to what value of prototype roughness coefficient would be this corresponds to? We know that 
prototype coefficient divided by model coefficient is equal to 1 by scale ratio to the power of 2 by 3. Therefore, prototype coefficient is equal to model coefficient divided by scale ratio to the power of 2 by 3 which is equal to 0 0.013 divided by 1 by 100 to the power of 2 by 3. So, prototype roughness coefficient will be 0 0.2 zero so option b is the right answer question number 44 three reservoirs a b and c are interconnected by the pipes as shown in the below figure so here you can observe these are the three reservoirs a b and c so here you can observe reservoir a is at highest point and reservoir c is at lowest point so let the reservoir c as the lowest head of elevation 140 meter so the direction of the flow can be determined by the head difference as the flow occurs from high head to lower head. Head available at the reservoir A is 200 meter. At the reservoir A, head is greater than head available at the junction. So at the junction it is head of 160 meter. So the direction of the flow will be from A towards J. The direction of the flow will be from A to towards J. Next, the head available at reservoir B is 180 meter, which is greater than head available at the junction of 160 meter. So the direction of the flow will be from B towards J. So from the reservoir B, the flow of direction will be towards J. Similarly, head available at the reservoir C is 140 meter, which is less than head available at the junction of 160 meter. So the direction of the flow will be from J towards C. Therefore, the discharge will be Q3 is equal to Q1 plus Q2. Discharge at the lowest head of reservoir C is equal to discharge of reservoir coming from A and B. So the right answer is option A. Q1 plus Q2 is equal to Q3. Question number 45. A 2 hour unit diagraph can be approximated as a trapezoidal as shown in the below figure. The unit diagraph refers to the catchment of A. So we have to calculate the area of unit diagraph which is equal to catchment area into 1 cm depth. Therefore, area of the unit diagraph will be 1382400 divided by 0 0.01 which is equal to 138.24 km square. So the right answer is option A. Question number 46. A wear on a permeable foundation with a downstream sheet pile is shown in the below figure. The exit gradient as per the coast loss method is. So we have to calculate the exit gradient as per the coast loss theory. The exit gradient is given by the formula H divided by D into 1 divided by pi into square root of lambda. Where H is the depth of water in upstream. So this is the depth of water at upstream and d is the depth of sheet pile which is given as 4 meter so this is the depth of sheet pile lambda is given by the formula 1 plus square root of 1 plus alpha square divided by 2 where alpha is the ratio of breadth of flow divided by depth of sheet pile so alpha is b by d breadth of the floor is 10 meter so here you can observe this is a 10 meter breadth of the floor so 10 divided by depth of the sheet pile is 4 meter so 10 divided by 4 which is equal to 2.5 now substituting this alpha value in the equation 1 plus square root of 1 plus 2.5 square divided by 2 so the lambda value will be 1.8462 therefore exit gradient g e is equal to h is the total depth above upstream 
so it is 5 meter 5 divided by depth of sheet pile 4 meter into 1 divided by pi into square root of 1.8462 on calculating this the exit gradient will be 0.2925 which is equal to 1 divided by 3.4 so the right answer is option c 1 in 3.4 question number 47 the water surface profile resulting from the flow underneath the gate in the below figure is so this is the gate we have to find the water surface profile under this gate so in this section you can observe there is a rising curve so this is a rising curve so for this type of the section the suitable water surface profile is h3 so option a is the right answer 48 two completely penetrating wells are located at a distance of l apart in a homogeneous confined aquifer the drawdown measured at the midpoint between the two consecutive wells is 2 meter so this is the drawdown measured at two midpoints of well when only the first well is being pumped it is q1 meter cube per second when both the wells are being pumped at an identical state discharge is q2 meter cube per second the drawdown measured at the same location is 8 meter it may be assumed that the drawdown at the well being remains at 10 meter when being pumped and the radius of influence is larger than 0.5 times of length into q1 divided by q2 is equal so the radius of influence is larger when 0.5 times of length into q1 divided by q2 which is greater than natural log of length divided by 2 so the right answer is option d question number 49 the limiting depth of offset is dash when its perpendicular direction is set out by an i so when the perpendicular direction is set out by an i its limiting depth will be always less than or equal to 15 meter for short offset so the right answer is option c question number 50 the power of telescope to question number 50 the power of the telescope to form distinguishable images of object separated by a small angular distance is called resolving power option d is the right answer the minimum distance between the two objects which can be seen properly is called resolving power so resolving power is the ratio of d divided by 1.22 times of lambda where lambda is the wavelength of the light used and d is the distance between the two points so it is the inverse of limit of observation question number 51 the principle of tachometry is used in surveying tachometry principle is used for locating contours for hydrographic survey for filling in detail in topographic surveys all these options are correct so the right answer is option d all of the above Question number 52. The amount of super elevation on railway is equal to. From the following figure, we can conclude tan theta is equal to super elevation divided by its gauge length. So, it is also equal to centrifugal force divided by weight. So, at equilibrium, E by G is equal to F by W. So super elevation E is equal to F into gauge length of a rail divided by total weight of the train. So super elevation is equal to force is W V square divided by G into R. So W V square divided by G into R into G divided by W. So the rate of super elevation will be G V square divided by g into r where w w get cancelled where g is the dynamic gauge length r is the radius of the curve g is the acceleration due to gravity v is the velocity in kilometer per hour so the right answer is option b here you can observe the formula is printed as wrong it should be g v square divided by g into r question number 53 measurements taken with a wrong scale can be corrected by using the relation l is equal to correct scale divided by wrong scale into measure length of the line so option a is the right answer true length is equal to correct scale divided by wrong scale into measure length question number 54 the maximum allowable limit that a measurement may vary from the true value is called permissible error option a is the right answer question number 55 in case of a truly vertical photograph which of the following points coincide so in a truly vertical photograph, principal point will always coincide with ISO center, 
ISO center will always coincide with plumb point and this plumb point will always coincide with principal point. So all these points will coincide with each other. So the right answer is option D. Principal point, ISO center and plumb point will always coincide with each other. Question number 56. The operation of the resection involves the following step. So in the method of resection, the first step is rough orientation should be done. So this is first step. And then we should draw a line back through the three control points. Second step is this. And then from three lines, we should draw a triangle of error. This is third step. And the fourth step is select a point in the triangle of error such that array is equally rotated either in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. So this is fourth step. And finally, the points obtained by the three rays is in correct location. So this is fifth step. So the correct code combination is 1, 3, 2, 4, 5. So the correct code sequence is option A, 1, 3, 2, 4, 5. Question number 57. The volume of the cement in 50 kg bag is. So before calculating the volume, let's find out the number of bags in 1 meter cube of cement. So for 1 meter cube, number of bags will be density of cement 1440 kg per meter cube divided by weight of 1 bag of cement. So it is 50 kg. So the number of bags will be 28.80 in numbers so volume of one bag of cement will be one divided by number of bags so it is 28.8 so the volume will be 0 0.03472 meter cube so volume of the cement bag in liters means for one meter cube it is thousand liters so for 0 0.03472 meter cube volume of cement in liter means it is 0 0.03472 into 1000 so it is 34.72 liters so option b is the right answer 34.7 liters question number 58 for preparing 10 cubic meter of 1 is to 4 is to 8 cement concrete the requirement of a sand would be so this is the mixed proportion of the cement concrete and this is the quantity of the cement concrete 10 cubic meter so we have to calculate the quantity of sand so quantity of the sand is equal to 4 divided by 1 plus 4 plus 8 because this is the mixed proportion in terms of cement sand and aggregate so for sand quantity it is 4 divided by sum of the mixed proportion so 4 divided by 1 plus 4 plus 8 into total quantity of a cement concrete is 10 cubic meter. On calculating this, the quantity of the sand will be 3.076 cubic meter. So the right answer is option B. Question number 59. ABC classification of the city is based on population. Option B is the right answer. Question number 60. Which of the following is necessarily an accurate estimate? So among this estimation, plinth area method is the most accurate estimate. Option A is the right answer. Question number 61. In which work the output in cubic meter per mason per day can be expected to be maximum? So for random rubble masonry in line, the expected outturn is 1 cubic meter. For stone arch work, it is 0.4 cubic meter. And for reinforced brickwork, it is 1 cubic meter. And for RCC, it is 5 cubic meter. So among this option, the maximum output will be in RCC work. Option D is the right answer. Question number 62. 1 cubic meter of Portland cement weighs. For 1 cubic meter, it is 50 kg is the weight of a cement bag divided by volume of 1 cement bag is 0 0.03472. So for 1 meter cube of Portland cement, it weighs approximately 1440 kg. So the right answer is option D. Question number 63. The process of calculating the resource requirement of a project is known as resource aggregation, which is measured in terms of input data. 
in terms of either in energy amount of money or any information that is put into computer system of an organization or a machine so that it can start operating so it is always measured in terms of input data so it is called resource aggregation option c is the right answer question number 64 time and progress chart of a construction is also known as in a construction management time and progress chart represents bar charts so in the following figure you can observe the bar charts it is a pictorial chart having a two coordinate axis time and activities to be performed where the length of the bars shows the time required for completion of activity so bar chart is also called as gantt charts and it is also called as modified milestone chart so among this all these options are correct so the right answer is option d question number 65 if d is the duration es and a for the early start and early finish time ls and lf are the latest start and latest finish time then the following relation holds good so this is the method of critical path this is the critical path method and we know that duration is equal to early finish minus early start and the difference between the latest finish and early finish is equal to latest start minus early start and latest finish so this is the latest finish time which is equal to latest start time plus its duration so among the following option all these are correct so the right answer is option d question number 66 a drawback of the bar chart is in a bar chart the sequence of activities is not well defined all the activities represented are independent of each other so they are independent option c it is difficult to judge whether the activity is completed or not this is also a major drawback option d it is not possible to judge whether the activity is ahead or behind the schedule so we can't predict whether it is completed or not or ahead or behind the schedule so all these are the major drawbacks of the bar charts so question number 67 in the management the following are the objectives of wage incentives wage incentives are given for the workers to lower the unit cost to improve the cost control and increase the worker morale all these statements are right so the correct answer is option d 1 2 and 3 question number 68 consider the following statement regarding the early start and early finish time statement 1 the earliest possible time that the job can be begin is called early start of the job this statement is true statement 2 early finish of the job is early start time plus job completion time which means that it is early finish is equal to early start plus duration this statement is also a true statement statement 3 for jobs with no predecessor the early start time is equal to start time of the project so when there is no predecessor early start time is equal to start time of the project this statement is true statement statement 4 the early start of the job is the largest of the early finish time of all the immediately predecessor this statement is false because the early start of the job is smallest of the early finish time of all the immediately predecessor so the among these statements statement 1 2 and 3 are correct so the right answer is option c question number 69 when the span of the bridge is varying from 20 meter to 30 meter which type of the bridge is suitable based on the span length of the bridge for 10 meter to 20 meter slab type of the bridge is adopted and for 20 to 30 meter t beam type of bridge is adopted and for 150 to 600 meter cantilever type of bridge is adopted in the question it is asked for the span range of 20 to 30 meter so for this type of the span length the most suitable type of bridge is t beam bridge option b is the right answer in the following figure you can observe the t beam bridge it is a combination of deck slab with longitudinal girder and cross girders Question number 70 the economical span length of the bridge is given by so its effective length or economical span length of the bridge will be number of piers minus 1 into total length of the bridge so the right answer is option d l is equal to n minus 1 into l in this option they have given a printing mistake instead of division symbol it should have been given as multiplication symbol so n minus 1 into L should be the right answer. Question number 71. In a simply supported span bridge, generally bearings are. Usually, the bearings provided for the bridge are of two types. One is expansion bearing, another one is fixed type of bearing. So, fixed bearing type allows the rotation and limit the translation movement 
and in type of expansion bearing, it allows both rotation and translation movement. So both these type of the bearings are fixed bearing. Option C is the right answer. Question number 72. In the design of bridges, the distribution of live loads among the longitudinal girders can be estimated by Kerbin method, Pigot method, Royal Masonot method, Henry Jagger method. So all these methods are used for the design of distribution of live load among the longitudinal girders. So the right answer is option D. All of the above. Question number 73. The impact allowance is expressed as a fraction of applied load for IRC class A loading is computed by the expression I is equal to A divided by B plus L. Choose the correct values from option A, B, C and D. Where I is the impact factor fraction, A and B are the constant values depending on RCC or steel type of bridges. And L is the length of span of bridges in meter. For RCC bridges, the constant value A is 4.5 and constant value B is 6. Similarly, for steel bridges, the constant value A is 9 and constant value B is 13.5. So if you read out this option, the option A is the right answer. Question number 74. Percentage of the fresh water available on the earth is 2.8% and this amount of fresh water is constituted from groundwater and rivers. So the right answer is option A. Question number 75. Excessive concentration of nitrates in water causes methemoglobinemia. Option C is the right answer. It is also called as blue baby diseases. And the concentration of nitrates should be limited up to 45 mg per liter. So if it exceeds this concentration, the disease called methemoglobinemia will be caused. Question number 76. Desired concentration of fluoride in drinking water is so, the concentration of fluoride should be limited to 1 to 1.5 mg per liter. Option A is the right answer. So, if it exceeds this concentration, it causes dental fluorosis. Question number 77. The pH range of drinking water is 6.5 to 8.5. Question number 78. In water treatment, alum is used for coagulation purpose. Option B is the right answer. Alum is also called as aluminium sulphate. So if this aluminum sulphate is added to water, it destabilizes the mud particles suspended in it and this process is known as coagulation. So option B is the right answer. Question number 79. Discharge of industrial effluents into surface water increases. Industrial water are highly toxic compounds which are organic and inorganic and may increase serious toxicity in living organisms. So it may increase both toxic compounds and organic matter. So option C is the right answer both A and B. Question number 80. Ecology is defined as a study of. Ecology is defined as a study of interaction between the organism and with the abiotic components of their environment. Ecosystems are composed of dynamically interacting parts having organism communities they make up and non-living components of their environment. So both options are right. Option A and B. Question number 81. A tropic level of organism represents an organism position in a food chain. Option B is the right answer. Question number 82. The major environmental impact of agriculture is. So, the environment impact of on agriculture will be conversion of forest land to cropland and conversion of grassland to cropland. Option A and B are correct. So, both A and B is the right answer. Option D will be the correct answer. Question number 83. Fossil fuel burning contributes. Fossil fuel burning contributes large amount of carbon dioxide, greenhouse gas into air such as ozone, nitrous oxide and sulfur dioxide. So option D is the right answer. Question number 84. Global warming effects on. Global warming is a phenomenon of gradual increase in earth's temperature generally due to the greenhouse effects caused by increased level of carbon dioxide, chlorofluorocarbon and other pollutants. So global warming may affect intense drought that is in terms of food production and melting of glaciers means global warming in oceans and climate change means there is an increase in uh, mean sea level and climatic change all these options are correct so the right answer is option d question number 85 which of the following is a recyclable non-renewable resource non-renewable resources form extremely slowly or take a very long time to get back. So the constituents such as minerals, nutrients and metals 
are all recyclable non renewable resources so minerals nutrients metals are all recyclable non renewable resources option d is the right answer question number 86 the range of sealed particle size in soil is less than 0.002 mm option d is the right answer question number 87 a compacted soil sample with a bulk unit weight of 20 kN per m3 cube has a water content of 15% the degree of saturation having a specific gravity of 2.65 of the soil sample is so we have to determine the degree of saturation we know that degree of saturation into void ratio is equal to water content into specific gravity of the soil so water content is given as 15% so 0.15 and specific gravity is 2.65 so if you calculate this the rate of saturation into void ratio is equal to 0.3975 we know that bulk unit weight is equal to g plus s e divided by 1 plus e into unit weight of water let us assume unit weight of water as 10 kN per m3 cube and the value of saturation into void ratio as 0.3975 as we have calculated from this formula so substituting this value bulk unit weight is 20 kN per m3 cube specific gravity is 2.65 plus the value of saturation into void ratio as 0.3975 into unit weight of water is 10 divided by 1 plus e therefore 1 plus e is equal to 30.475 divided by 20 so the value of void ratio will be 0.5237 substituting this value in this equation saturation into void ratio 0.5237 is equal to 0.3975 therefore the degree of saturation will be 75. 90% which is approximately equal to 76%. So among this option the nearest answer is 78.9%. So option A is the right answer. Question number 88 the coefficient of consolidation is used to calculate time rate of consolidation. Option A is the right answer. It is a parameter used to describe the rate at which the saturated clay or other soil undergoes consolidation or compaction and it is calculated by the formula time rate of consolidation is equal to coefficient of consolidation into time factor divided by h square where h is the thickness of consolidated clay layer question number 89 the relative density of a soil having maximum void ratio of 1.12 minimum void ratio of 0.6 and natural void ratio of 0.9 is we know that relative density is the ratio of difference between maximum void ratio minus natural void ratio divided by maximum void ratio minus minimum void ratio so this is a relative density of soil on substituting the given values the relative density will be 1.12 minus 0.9 divided by 1.12 minus 0.6 on solving this the relative density of a soil will be 0.423 so the right answer is option a question number 90 for a general shear failure pattern in soil in the following picture you can observe the general shear failure pattern of a soil which occurs in medium to dense soil and stiff clays it has a well defined failure pattern and failure is sudden having its internal friction greater than 36 degree and relative density value greater than 70% so for general shear failure pattern its void ratio will be between 0.55 to 0.75 option c is the right answer question number 91 in bearing capacity equation for soil as per terzaghi's bearing capacity theory the bearing capacity factors nc nq and n gamma are the functions of angle of internal friction only so the bearing capacity factor nc shall always be greater than 
n cube so the right answer is option a question number 92 in a pile load test each load increment on the pile is maintained till the rate of settlement becomes less than 0.11 mm per hour option c is the right answer question number 93 the camber generally provided for cement concrete pavement is camber is defined as the cross slope of the road to remove rainwater from road surface it depends upon the type of road and climatic condition depending upon these conditions as per irc the camber generally provided for cement concrete pavement is 1 in 50 to 1 in 60 option a is the right answer question number 94 the mechanical widening of a single lane road at a horizontal curve of radius 100 meter for a wheelbase of 6 meter is we know that extra widening is the sum of mechanical widening plus psychological widening where mechanical widening is given by the formula nl square divided by 2r and psychological widening is given by v divided by 9.5 square root of r where n is the number of lane l is the length of wheelbase r is the radius of horizontal curve radius of horizontal curve is given as 100 meter and length of the wheelbase is given as 6 meter number of lane is given as single lane road so it is 1 since it is asked to calculate only the mechanical widening width let's use the formula nl square divided by 2r n is the number of lane 1 l is the length of wheelbase 6 meter so 6 square divided by 2 into r r is the radius of horizontal curve 100 meter on calculating this the mechanical widening width will be 0.18 meter so option b is the right answer question number 95 if cl is the curve lead sl is the switch lead and l is the lead distance for a turnout then we know that lead distance is the distance measured along the length of the main track and it is given by the formula lead distance is equal to difference between the curve lead and switch lead by rearranging this formula curve lead is equal to switch lead plus lead distance option a is the right answer question number 96 in a rigid pavements tie bars are provided in longitudinal joints option b is the right answer in the following picture you can observe the tie bars provided on the longitudinal joints question number 97 traffic capacity is traffic capacity is expressed as the maximum number of vehicles in a lane or a road that can pass in a given point of unit time usually for an hour that is it is expressed in maximum number of vehicles per lane per unit time option a is the right answer question number 98 in which of the following traffic signal system are the cycle length and cycle division automatically varied so in the flexible progressive system the cycle length and cycle division are automatically varied and it is the most efficient method among the four system of traffic signal system so the right answer is option d Question number 99. The average daily traffic on a stretch of road is 300 cumulative vehicles per day. Design traffic reputation for 10 years when the vehicle damaging factor is 2.5 and the traffic growth rate is 7.5%. So, average daily traffic A is equal to 300 cumulative vehicles per day. Rate of increase of traffic growth is 7.5%. So, it is equal to 0.075 n is the number of repetition in years so it is 10 years so we have to calculate the design traffic in a year so as per irc the design traffic n is equal to 365 a into 1 plus r to the power of n minus 1 into vehicle damaging factor divided by r on substituting this value n is equal to 365 into 300 into 1 plus 0 0.075 to the power of 10 minus 1 into 2.5 divided by 0 0.075 on calculating this the design traffic will be 3.872 million standard axles so option a is the right answer question number 100 as per irc in the calculation of safe stopping site distance the height of the object above the surface that should be visible to the driver is 0.15 meter option b is the right answer question 